I'm seeing so much out there on God and religion and get connected with Jesus and all that stuff. And I thought I would post this video of only my experiences of how do you know when God is talking to you. And these are just my own experiences. You know, if it means anything to anybody, good. If it doesn't, if it's crap, I really don't care. I'm just sharing. Um, but when I was really young, I lost my eyesight basically in one day. And, and not completely, but enough to be legally blind without glasses or contacts. And um, I had begged and pleaded because my glasses that I ended up getting from that experience were like I took a ruler. They were just a fraction under an inch thick, which couldn't even sit on, on my eyes. You cannot, like the glasses had to be more than an inch away from my, my eyes to be able to work. And I was like 12 at the time of wearing these glasses and having everybody call me names at school and stuff so I was begging and begging and begging to God please let me have contacts I will do everything you want me to do I will be the best person I can be and I made all of these promises and promises to God and usually it's when you you I've made a prayer just before I go to bed and you completely give up all of your own personal beliefs, your own, you know, fight to get whatever it is you want. You just had, I've always gotten to the point where you just give up completely and it's like, okay, God, this is in your hands now. <laughs> and um, then you ask him for what it is you want. And every time I've always gotten an answer, every single time that I've done something like that, I've always gotten an answer and this is how it works that night I had like said all of these prayers and God you just you know please give me these contacts and the very next day I had no idea about this but my mother had made this optometrist appointment and the optometrist said you can't you have to get your daughter in contact lenses because they will stop her eyes from growing worse. They will be a lot cheaper for you because you don't have to come in every six months and thicken up those glasses and it'll save her eyesight. And there was a whole pile of medical reasons why I needed contact lenses. And back then, in them days, you had to be at least 16 to wear contacts because kids couldn't uh, be trusted to care for their own eyes. So that was miracle number one. And I kind of always paid attention to that because I was like, oh, God's listening to me. Maybe I'll do that again. And it's definitely when you get to that point of giving up the fight, you know, and always when you're asking just before you go to bed. So there was this other time that um, I, I, I had tried so many different things, employment things, and nothing ever worked out and I was starting to get into computer programming but I really really didn't want to start another career just to find out it wasn't gonna work out and so the night before again it was like okay God you gotta tell me I'm doing the right thing and the next day nobody knew I was saying these prayers the next day at about seven o'clock in the morning this girlfriend of mine phones me up and says the words, Judy, guess what? You're doing the right thing. There was just a radio show that says this is going to be an in-demand career. So I ended up taking programming. Um, didn't get me anywhere, <laughs> but um, it did give me a lot of information that was sort of part of the bigger picture. So I could see the value of why it was important for me to take programming, but it wasn't, uh, profitable career-wise at that time and then there was another time when I was raided in the middle of a severe abuse situation I knew I had to do this or I had to do that one of two things and 
And that night I was like, really gave up the fight. And it's like, okay, God, you got to tell me what to do again. And the next day, you know, following my own path and doing what I need to do, I had to phone some lawyers and this lawyer ended up saying, like, he couldn't help me. <laughs> so I was getting really pissed off and I thought he hung up the phone. So I hung up the phone. So he phones me back and says, I didn't want to leave you in that state of mind. So he ended up saying the words, have you ever, and then stopped. And it was like, what were you going to say? And he says, never mind. And so three times I begged him, you got to tell me what you were going to say. And he says, okay, have you ever heard of the book Conversations with God? Which I did, which means um, that message in that book is basically God works through other people. And uh, so then he ended up saying the words, God wants me to speak with you. And he said, you're supposed to take everything that was done to you and do something with it. And right away, instantly, there was a huge knowing that, okay, the problem's not going to end. There's going to be a long period before I'll know what to do with everything. Because I was still right in the middle of it. But it gave me this knowing that I would one day know what to do. So, um, ended up getting so much research and so much information just poured on me over the years so many other experiences um, but so much information came to me so it's like okay now I know what to do with it <laughs> but as you see I'm posting over 300 videos and not really getting any interest in anybody actually knowing any information so again I'm probably going to be asking God tonight <laughs> okay what does he want me to do because um, I think I know what I'm supposed to be doing but it's you know nothing is really happening so I don't think that I'm on the right track so those have been my experiences is that uh, usually when you pray and you really give up then they show up. There's been other times where, you know, I knew, I mean, <laughs> one time, for some odd reason, I was just, got this swoosh of feeling of, okay, God's mailing me this airbrush. I, I had an airbrush that broke, and it was like, I just finished this one, I was trying to do another career, and um, that airbrush broke, and it was like, there's no way God would show me that I could have that much talent and then just take the tools away. God must be mailing me an airbrush. And I just had a lot of fun with it, and within two weeks, an airbrush showed up, mailed to my door. <laughs> so, that wasn't at night, though, but I had a lot of fun with that one. And God was definitely very much involved in that one. So, um, those are just some of my experiences. I know that... Um, you can't be in a fight you know if you have that fight you gotta do something then you're driven by your own logic your own rules your own belief systems everything that's inside you that is telling you everything that's wrong and it's like when you can give up all of that logic and just like surrender it all and really really just let go and let God basically and then just ask him and and then you have to pay attention to what crosses your path you know it, it works through other people so there's messages other people tell you so you know I am kind of asking God okay what is it I'm supposed to do with all of this information so if anybody's out there like God works through other people please let me know what am I supposed to do with all of this information <laughs> You know, like just keep it to myself. Um, I also know that uh, when God doesn't speak to you, and that's when you're kind of asking for answers and people push their ideas and sales jobs on you to get them to do what you want them to do. And I've been falling for that all the time. And it's like, you know what, I wasn't even asking for that, and yet you're pushing me this information. So it's like, if somebody's telling you what to do, and you never even asked for that information, chances are those that's a bad direction to go into, because it's, they're trying to manipulate you into their thing. Um, so 
you know, people that want to push things, you know, on their ideas, I don't tend to listen to you. I listen to the answers of the questions I'm asking. Peace out. Hope that helps anybody.